Hey guys, Leo here. Welcome back to the channel. So, this is a backlog topic, Crisis on Infinite Earths. You, you all have seen it, so let's talk about it. Boy oh boy, were my predictions wrong. Were my predictions way off. They actually pulled the trigger in killing off Oliver Queen. Man. I am kind of surprised. I mean, I knew Arrow was ending, but I thought it was like really obvious that, that they were going to off him, that they weren't going to, as I said so in an earlier video. But anyway, um, Crisis has been done for at least a week right now. So what did, what did you guys think? Well, what did I think? I thought it was pretty good. There were certain things that could have been done better, but all in all, pretty good. I mean, it, this big crossover, it had a lot of hype behind it, and it delivered on a good amount of it. There were a little bit of disappointments, but all in all, um, they made the battle on such a cosmic scale, and they did it on TV budget, which is pretty impressive. I mean, don't expect the CGI. Don't expect the CGI to be out of this world or anything. But story was. What's the word I'm looking for? Pretty focused story. There was a central story, and um, in spite of it going, in spite of it taking place on literally infinite Earths, it still managed to have a focal story. To stop the anti-monitor from destroying all the worlds, which they failed to do. So how did they, how did they come about redeeming it? They had to restart the universe, restart all of existence, restart all the worlds. But anyway, um, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. So let's just take it to the beginning. Things I was surprised about. Oliver Queen getting killed? I mean, what, add, what added more to the surprise was that they killed him off in hour one of Crisis. After the first episode, the first of five episodes, they killed Oliver just like that. He was absent for the most part in like the following two episodes. Uh, besides that scene of Sarah... Um, Mia, Barry, taking him to a, an alternate Earth, an alternate dimension, where uh, there were still Lazarus pits. They put him in there to... They put him in there, you know, to bring him back. And they tried to reunite his soul with his body, like how, with the help of Constantine, like how he did with Sarah, you know, all those years ago. Um... But he refused to come back this time. I, I thought it was um, an interesting twist to have Oliver become Spectre this time, to become a Spectre. I thought that that was um, a, a good twist. It was, uh, it was, um, it definitely was, you know, a, bit, a surprise. I don't know any other way to put it. So. With Oliver's Specter powers, we're like, wow, is he going to be the one who defeats the Anti-Monitor? So he decides to, you know, to remain in purgatory. And then... They failed, like I said, they failed to stop the Anti-Monitor from destroying all of the Earths. So... Oh man, guys, I see something over there. Is that a spider or a mosquito on the wall? Anyway, guys, I'm gonna try to focus on this video, but man, those things kind of creep me out. Anyway, back to Crisis. Where was I? Man, that bug really distracted me. So yeah, Oliver decides to remain in Purgatory and to become the new host for the Spectre. He becomes a Spectre. So with his new Spectre powers, as I was saying, would he be the one to defeat the Anti-Monitor? But anyway, oh, 
that's where I was. So the heroes, they failed to stop the Anti-Monitor from destroying all Earths. So um, Pariah, you know, Tom Cavanaugh's character, takes them all to like this edge of the universe place. I forgot what it was called. Yeah, to the edge of time. And um, he took only the Paragons, the, which were Barry, Sarah, um, Batwoman, Supergirl, and Ryan Choi. Oh, and Lex Luthor. Forgot about Lex Luthor. Yeah. Well, they, they took Kingdom Come Superman, but Lex Luthor being, you know, being the weasel that he is, he rewrote certain things in the Book of Destiny, and he took Superman's place as the Paragon. Man, Lex Luthor. Anyway... So what happens next? Um, well, they, they, they were trapped in that edge of the universe place, in that place that's the edge of the universe, the edge of time. They were trapped in that place for months. And then Oliver appears to them as the specter. And with the help of Oliver, they get to the place where they have one last seemingly one last stand against the anti-monitor yet Oliver he sacrifices himself again to stop the anti-monitor seemingly destroying him but we find out that he was not destroyed we'll later find that out and Oliver uses but Oliver uses the last ounces of his newfound powers to start a new universe you see this new universe it combines um, you know, the Arrowverse that we know that home to Oliver Queen, home to Barry Allen, home to Arrow and the Flash, home to Legends of Tomorrow, that universe gets combined with Supergirl's Earth, gets combined with Black Lightning's Earth. Yeah. So then Oliver basically recreated the whole multiverse with Earth Prime, you know, with Earth Prime. Earth Prime being like one of the dimensions. So Earth Prime is this new Earth. Like I said, it, it incorporates the universes of Arrow and Flash and Legends of Tomorrow combined with Supergirl's Earth combined with Black Lightning's Earth. So now you have Earth Prime. But then the Anti-Monitor is not destroyed yet. So the remaining heroes band together and defeat the find a way to defeat the anti-monitor by having him shrink infinitely so so now so they defeat the anti-monitor and and honored Oliver's heroic sacrifice and the the Arrowverse is definitely going to be different without Oliver obviously so that's pretty much the gist of it. Now things I did like about it, things I didn't like about Crisis, I did not like the way they portrayed Kevin Conroy's character. I did not like the character that Kevin Conroy was given. I mean this guy is like one of the most legendary Batman, one of the most legendary Batman and you gave him an evil character, a, a character that was broken, a character that went psycho and killed his Earth's Superman. And then later on, he gets he gets defeated and killed by Batwoman. Just like it was just like very just not honorable, you know. And I believe that Kevin Conroy should have been giving some should have been given something honorable to work with. So that I did not like. I would say that Oliver definitely should have had more screen time. He was only prominent in like two of those five episodes. I mean, if this is, you know, Stephen Amell's goodbye to the Arrowverse, then his character definitely needed to make a bigger... I mean, he made a big impact, but he definitely needed to appear more. Just having him in, in two out of the five episodes, in two hours out, out of the five hours, that I, wasn't, I was not on board with. He definitely should have done more, in my opinion. Yeah, the fight between Oliver and the Anti-Monitor... All I saw were just beams and beams. That's all I saw. 
I, I wanted there to be like, you know, some hand-to-hand -hand combat, some, you know, archery and arrow shooting. Like maybe he could have combined his new Spectre powers into firing. Maybe he could have combined his new Spectre powers with his um, archery skills to, you know, shoot like powered up arrows. That would have been interesting. But anyway, those are my criticisms for it. But all in all, it was awesome seeing all the other Earths seeing Tom Welling return in the role of Clark Kent, um, you know, seeing all, seeing practically DC cinemas, like, it was, we, we practically saw DC cinemas portfolio, shall we say, in this crossover, so that was, that was really cool. So my final score for Crisis on Infinite Earths an 8 out of 10. So what do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Sound off on the comments below and I will catch you in the next video.